Hello anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsup, and in this last learning objective, yes I said the last, we will be discussing the arches of the foot. In this video we will be, des be describing the main arches of the foot, what even are the functions of these arches, and structures that support them. There are three naturally occurring arches of the foot. But typically, when people think about the arch of the foot, they are thinking about the medial longitudinal arch, uh, which is located on the medial side of the foot. So this is the medial longitudinal arch, dashed in blue here. So again, this is on the medial side of the foot, and it is the highest arch and the most notable. The other two arches are less typically discussed, but I will introduce them here. There is the lateral longitudinal arch, which is the which is much flatter than the medial counterpart, and it naturally rests on the ground during standing. So it's not pathological for this to actually contact the ground. There is also a transverse arch, which runs, as its name would suggest, transversely from side to side. So whereas, say, the, um, the medial arch would be over here and the lateral arch would be over here, the transverse arch kind of runs this way. Functionally, these three arches will work as a unit to spread the weight that will enter this region kind of in all directions. So very important in distributing weight. Additionally, these arches absorb shock that occurs during locomotion and weight bearing activities. So if the feet were really rigid structures, that would make each impact with the ground not as efficient and um, could cause issues. And that relative resiliency that the arches have allows the foot to adapt to changes in surfaces during locomotion. But in order to maintain the integrity of the bony arches of the foot, there needs to be supports as well as more passive factors. The most important of these in maintaining the arches of the foot are the plantar aponeurosis, which is this thickened portion of the plantar fascia. We'll extend into these kind of sheaths right here. So the thickened portion of the plantar fascia, relatively superficial. So it will be plantar aponeurosis as well as deeper plantar ligaments. And these are true ligaments, connective tissue connecting bone to bone. You may hear the names of some of these ligaments. You have the spring, the long plantar, and the short plantar ligaments. Uh, you basically have to remove all muscle bellies and fascia in this region to get down to the level of the ligaments. They are quite deep. They're connecting bone to bone, so they should be deep. So these are really kind of the main components in terms of primary support, but there are other factors that support the arches, including simply the shape of the articulating bones. They fit in such a way that really facilitate these arches, uh, as well as long tendons crossing along the sole of the foot. As, and intrinsic muscles located entirely in the sole of the foot. These will all play a role in maintenance of these arches. In some cases, there can be a relatively shallow medial longitudinal arch, and this is referred to as pes planus, or flat feet. And you can see an example of that with the medial longitudinal arch um, truly touching the ground during standing here. There are numerous causes for flat feet, um, including bone or connective tissue deformities. So this could, uh, could be something that uh, happens early on um, or more congenital. Or this can be acquired with damage to supporting connective tissue structures or bone. This is off, if it's acquired, that's often referred to as fallen arches because uh, that connective tissue or bone had been kind of typical, but issues that occurred uh, over time, such as repetitive use or repetitive inflammation that caused kind of destruction in these areas to allow for the arches to fall. 
Not mentioned here, you can have an overly arched medial, medial longitudinal arch, and this is referred to as pes cavus or high arch. Most excellent. Thank you all so, so much for your time and attention here and throughout our time together. Please take time to review and always feel free to reach out to me or any of my anatomy colleagues. Thank you for your time and attention and have an excellent rest of your day.